Hey, what's up everybody? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC and today I'll be showing you how to rebuild the inner chambers cartridge from a WP open chamber style of fork that we pulled off of a 2015 KTM 300 XCW. All right, so inside of our cartridge, we've got a couple pistons with some shims, which is our valving, along with some O-rings and a wear band that sits on the rebounding valves piston. Now, all of these parts are going to wear out over a period of time in use and will eventually need to be replaced. Now, you will definitely want to freshen up the cartridge, especially if you've been experiencing a loss in compression dampening force. And that's especially if you're experiencing that through the mid-stroke when the forks are under compression. So today, we're gonna to be showing you how to rebuild this cartridge. Now, the process that we're gonna show you here here today can be applied to many KTM and Husqvarna dirt bikes that are running an open chamber style of fork. However, when it comes to working on your bike, always be sure to reference your service menu for those specific procedural details. All right, to do this job, you are going to need a heat gun along with a fork rebuild kit. Now, the kit that we're gonna be using here today is from Pivotworks. It comes with everything that you're gonna to need to do a complete rebuild, including your dust seals, oil seals, bushings, and along with all the O-rings and other parts, we'll need to rebuild the cartridge. Now, keep in mind that this kit does fit a wide variety of different bikes. So for this video that we're gonna be doing today, it's gonna to come with more parts than we're actually going to need. So just keep that in mind. Now, we do offer other kits that are more specific on our website, so be sure to check that out. Now, you will wanna have some fork oil, some contact cleaner, and then two special tools here from Racetech. We've got our special vice jaws along with the cartridge holding tool. You will want to have some thread locker, some medium strength and high strength, as well as some seal and o-ring grease, then some basic hand tools with some compressed air, a torque wrench, some rags, rubber gloves, and safety glasses. Keep in mind that these steps are the exact same for both of the forks. Now, if you need help with getting to this point with the cartridge out of the fork, you can check out our how-to video on the WP 48 millimeter open chamber fork with spring preload adjuster. Now, if you're curious as to whether or not if you have these forks, you can look at the fork cap and you'll notice that the spring preload adjuster will rotate independently of the fork cap itself. And then we've got several pin holes right here that require a pin spanner type of fork cap wrench in order to disassemble them. All right, now when you start out, you're definitely gonna wanna put out a few rags that are clean, just so that way as we pull the cartridge apart, we can set out the parts in the order that they are removed from the cartridge. Now to begin, we're gonna take our cartridge, extend it like so, and we're going to remove the fluid barrier slash lock nut. Just unthread it, we're gonna set that aside. Once we get to this point, we can slide the dampening rod through the bottom of the cartridge. It's gonna come out the base of it here. Now, once we've got this separated like so, we can remove our spacer and our spring seat. Now, something I wanna point out real quick before we get this mounted inside of there, you will need a 22 millimeter box open-ended wrench that is fairly thin. As you can see, this is a thin wrench and we barely have enough room to get it onto the sleeve part of our cartridge. Now, you will also want to have a tool of sorts. For this, we're gonna be using a number three screwdriver but something that can fit through the slot holes and that doesn't leave a lot of slack inside of there. Because once we have this inside of our special vise, we're going to be using this to hold it in a fixed position while we heat this area and then remove it because we will be applying a lot of torque. All right, and when you're clamping this into the vise with the special vise jaws, you want to make sure that you're just holding the tube in place. You don't want to put too much pressure on it because if you do, you run the risk of actually collapsing the tube. It's not, very, not a very thick wall to it. Now, once you've got that secured inside of there, we're gonna take our heat gun, we're gonna heat this area of the sleeve, because this is where our threads are, to 50 degrees Celsius, or approximately 122 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so once we've got that nice and hot, we're gonna take our screwdriver, that's about the same size diameter as the holes that are in the bottom of this cartridge. We're gonna slide that in through so that we can hold it in a fixed position, that way our vise isn't putting too much pressure on it. And we'll take our thin 22 millimeter open-ended wrench, and place it on to the sleeve here, and then we are going to break it free. All right, so once you get this unthreaded, you're gonna to wanna to take it off with your open-ended wrench because it is still very, very hot. Next, we can begin working on the rebound valving on our compression shaft here. Now, before we do that, we're gonna spray it down with some contact cleaner to degrease it and rid it of any of our fork oil. Now, as you can see on the rebound valving piston, you can see our wear band is coming off. We've been having some problems with this just blowing through the mid-stroke when the forks are under compression. So this is our reason for getting into these forks. So if your wear band is coming off, it's gonna come off at some point right now as good as any time. 
Now next we're going to pull out the adjusting rod and then we can place this into our vise. Now what's cool about the shaft holding tool from Racetech is it's got these little pins that are going to engage with it that are on the special vise. So we're going to set this on there like so, it holds them into position. Then we're going to place this into the shaft holding tool. And for this fork, we're going to be clamping in this, this into the position of the 12.5. Now again, the same thing here when you're clamping this in, you don't want to apply too much force because then you run the risk of collapsing the tube. So now once we have that inside of there, we can take our 10 millimeter open-ended wrench or socket if you prefer, and we can begin to remove this nut. Now, as you can see, when you remove this nut, you'll notice that at the bottom side of this nut, the way that it's oriented now, it's gonna have a collar on it. So just keep that in mind when it comes time for reassembly. And then as I'm taking these parts off, I'm just gonna simply take them off and then set them right back down. That way when I go to put them on, there's no confusion as to if they're upside down or right side up. All right, so now we're gonna take our straight pick tool here. We're gonna place this into the end of the dampening rod like so. And then we're going to lift up on just the shims here. Now, it may be a little bit difficult to work them up off of the threads there, so just take your time, work them slowly. Make sure that you've removed all of the little shims. And then, just like I've taken them off, I'm just gonna set them right down on the table, just like that. And once we get that off of there, we're gonna be removing the piston. Now, as you can see, some shims are sticking to the bottom of it that are on the other side, so we're gonna make sure that those do not come off with it. Now, once you pull this off of there, pay, again, pay close attention to the orientation. On the top side of here, on this, triangular look inside, we've got small holes. And then on the bottom side of it, we've got much larger holes. So again, when you take this off, just leave it right side up the way that it is, set it down on your rag in the order that it came off. Now we're gonna pull off the remaining shim. So again, use your pick tool. And because this is the last set of shims, I'm just going to leave it like so. All right, then we've got a spring to remove. This is not directional, but still keep it in the same orientation and order that it came off. Now for this next piece that we're gonna be removing, we do wanna heat this up with our heat gun. And again, we're gonna bring it up to about 50 degrees Celsius or about 122 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, now to remove the tap rebounder, we're gonna be using a 17 millimeter open-ended wrench or a socket, whichever you prefer. Now again, remember, be careful when removing the tap rebound as this is extremely hot. All right, now once you've got the tap rebound removed, we can remove the spring that sits just beneath it. All right, now here on the tap rebound, we've got the part that controls our adjustments at the top of the fork. Now this doesn't usually come out with the tap rebound. It usually stays inside of the dampening rod inside of there. So if you pull your tap rebound and this is not on there, it's inside of your dampening rod and you will need to pull this out. Now again, while we have all of our parts removed, we're gonna go through and clean everything with contact cleaner, get them degreased. On the tap rebound, you can see we've got some thread locker that is residually just left on there. We're gonna to wanna to take our stainless steel brush and scrub those threads, make sure that everything is completely clean and then spray it off with air. We don't want any oils or any dusts on these parts when we go to assemble them. All right, so now that we've got all of our parts removed and disassembled, there are two O-rings that we are going to be replacing, one on the tap rebound as well as the adjuster's valve point here, this small O-ring. Now the kit's gonna come with several different sizes of O-rings, so what I would recommend that you do is line them all out, sizes largest to smallest, and as you remove these O-rings from the components, go take them and set them over next to the one that it most closely matches in diameter, and then we'll be using those to replace these old O-rings with. All right, so now that we've got our O-rings replaced, we can begin the rebuilding process. Now to start, we're gonna take this spring that's got the plastic collar inside of there. We're gonna place this facing down onto our dampening rod, press it on there so it's nice and snug. So we're gonna take a little bit of O-ring seal grease. We're gonna place it onto the O-ring here, and then we are going to place it inside of the tap rebound. Now when we place it in there, we're gonna press on the rebounding valve just enough to sort of the spring compresses slightly to make sure that it's seated inside of there. Now once we've got that, we're gonna apply some medium strength thread locker to the threads. Then we can install this into the dampening rod and torque to 13.3 foot pounds or 159.6 inch pounds. All right, so once we've got that torqued on there, we're going to mount this small spring. And we'll take our pick with our shim stack, place the pick inside like so, and we'll let our shim stack come down. We'll gently work it on there. Now before we install the piston, we need to make sure that all the shims are lined up 
This needs to be able to compress the spring without it getting tangled up inside of there. Once it's set like so, we can take our pick tool. We're gonna use this to hold the shims down. Then we're going to install the valve. All right, so once we get the piston situated on there, we can take the upper shim stack. We're gonna place it onto our pick. Set the pick inside of there like so. Then we're gonna let this come down and slowly and gently work it onto the tap rebound here. All right, now something I wanna point out real quick to you is the lower part of the upper shim stack. You can see these triangular shims, they actually move, right? So we need to make sure that these are aligned over the holes inside of the piston, just like this. All right, so once we've got our shims aligned with the piston's opening, we can now install the nut with the collar. So we'll take out our pick tool. We're gonna to take some medium strength thread locker. We're gonna apply just a little bit to the nut here. Then we can thread the nut onto the tap rebound. Now you wanna take your time get, with getting this started. It's, it may feel like it's stripped out or it's not going on the correct way. So take your time, make sure that you keep the nut nice and square. It is going to thread on there. It just feels that way because the end of the shaft has been peened. So those threads have been expanded just a little bit. So take your time with this, don't rush it. Really look at it nice and closely, make sure you're nice and square. Now, as you're threading this nut on, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and push down on your piston to make sure that it's still actuating against that spring and that the bottom shims are able to make it over that shoulder. Now, it's not a bad idea to hold it down Thread this on there a little more. All right, so we're gonna take our torque wrench and we're gonna to torque the 10 millimeter nut to 3.7 foot pounds or 44.4 inch pounds. Now when you're torquing this on, keep an eye on the triangular shim and make sure that it's, it stays covering the opening on the piston. All right, so now that we've got this rebuilt, the last step that the service manual calls that we do is to lock the nut. And what they mean by that is to take a punch and a hammer, you're gonna place it onto the shank that protrudes from the nut and then strike the punch. What this will do is it will flange the shank that protrudes from the nut over onto the nut, so that way it is not able to come off during operation. However, by installing a thread locker, we can achieve the same effect. All right, so now that we've got that reassembled, we can now take this out of the vise. We can remove our shaft holding tool, and we're going to clamp the cartridge into the vise. Now again, remember to not clamp this in there too tightly or you will damage it. Now for the next part, we're gonna take the wear band that comes in the kit, and we're going to lubricate it a little bit with some fork oil. I've just poured some into the cap here. I'm just gonna coat the wear band. All right, so once we've got this lubed up, we're going to take our rod here. We're gonna place this on to the piston. As you can see, it's a little stiff to work with, so you'll have to hold it together with your fingers. Once you've got it to about there, you're gonna to wanna to hold the part that connects together with your fingertips so that it stays around the piston. Then we're gonna bring this over to the cartridge, and we're gonna gently and slowly set this inside of the cartridge. Now you'll wanna take your time with this step as we don't want any part of the wear band to get hung up on the outer edge. So just slowly take your time and work it inside. All right, now once we get this placed inside of there, we don't want the piston to make it more than about half down the distance of the cartridge. We don't want this to make it down all the way out through the bottom or else that wear band will come off of the piston. So just make sure that it's sitting about in the middle. Next, we're going to install the sleeve onto the cartridge. Now, before we do that, we're gonna apply some high strength thread locker to the threads here. All right, now before we install the sleeve, I'm just gonna take a little bit of fork oil and I'm gonna place it into the inner diameter here just to lubricate it before we install it. Then we can place this onto the rod. All right, now the torque on this is 33.9 foot pounds. And remember that you don't wanna clamp this too hard into the vise. So when you're putting pressure on this sleeve to get it threaded onto 33.9 foot pounds, you're gonna to wanna to take a screwdriver and place it into the bottom of the cartridge. That way you can kinda of hold it and apply the appropriate amount of torque. Next, we can mount the spring seat and washer. Then we can install the fluid barrier or lock nut. You're gonna to wanna to thread this all the way onto the shaft. And then we can install the adjusting rod. 
And once you get this placed in here, you want to press down on it with your fingertips to make sure that it's working, that it's pushing against the spring inside of the valving. And again, you don't want this to protrude more than seven millimeters. So now that we've got this taken care of, we can pull this out of the vise and then we can start on the compression damping fitting. All right, so we're gonna clamp the compression dampening fitting into our vise with our special vise jaws. Clamp it in there so the shim stack's facing up. And we're going to remove this nut with our 17 millimeter open-ended wrench. So once we get the nut removed, we can remove this spring. Notice the smaller end of the coil is gonna be facing down. Then we can remove our washer. Then we can remove our piston. Be sure that the lower shim stack does not come with it. Now when you pull this off, you'll notice you've got the larger holes on the top, and then you've got the smaller holes on the bottom. Just make note of that for orientation. Then we can pull off our lower shim stack. Next, we can remove the O-ring. And once we get the rubber O-ring removed, we can remove this copper ceiling washer. And then on the piston itself, we have an additional O-ring that we will need to remove. Now, once we've got those O-rings removed, we're gonna place them next to the new ones that we have lined up here. And we're just gonna match it up with the one that fits the best. Now, before we install this onto the piston, we're just gonna take a little bit of O-ring and seal grease, just kind of lube it up. All right, so now we can install our O-ring onto the piston. And we can lubricate the O-ring that's gonna be placed back onto the dampening fitting. But before we place this onto the dampening fitting, we are going to install the new copper washer. Then we can install the new O-ring. Next, we can install the shim stack with the smaller shims facing down. Now, when you're placing these onto the compression dampening fitting, just take your time, be careful with them, don't force them on as we don't wanna bend them. All right, so once we've got those on there, we can place our piston onto the compression dampening fitting. Again, with the larger holes facing upwards. Then we can install the washer followed by the spring with the smaller coil facing down. And then before we install our nut, we're going to apply just a little bit of medium strength thread locker to the nuts threads. And we're gonna to torque this to 2.2 foot pounds or 26.4 inch pounds. Now again, when you're threading this on, you wanna make sure that it's nice and square, that you're not gonna cross thread it. So take your time with this. Now the initial installation of this nut is gonna give you a little bit of resistance. That's totally normal. But then once you get to a certain point, it will begin to rotate much easier, more freely. And when you get to that point is when you wanna put your torque wrench on and torque it to spec. All right, now when you're threading this on and into place, you wanna make sure that the washer is centered over the piston. Now the reason for that is the center diameter of the washer is actually going to sit around the lower part of the nut's collar, if that makes sense. So basically you need to make sure that it doesn't get hung up on its edge. Make sure that it's completely centered so that way we can get this seated fully into the position that it needs to be. So as you're installing this, just make sure that your washer, when it's sitting on top of the piston, is nice and centered. All right, now the last step for the service manual would be to lock the nut onto the assembly by peening the end of the part of the threads here that protrude from it with a punch and a hammer. However, using thread locker, you achieve the same effect. Now, if you need help with reassembling the rest of your forks, be sure to check out our how-to video, the WP 48 millimeter open chamber style of cartridge fork with spring preload adjuster. And that's it, that's all there is to it when it comes to rebuilding the cartridge. Now by doing this, you're definitely going to be able to get the most out of your suspension. Now if you have any questions as to what we've done here today, feel free to leave us a comment below and we can get an answer back to you. And keep in mind that all the parts that we've used here today can be found on our website, so be sure to check that out. That's it for me, I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching and keep the wrenches turning.